After Jesus was baptized, we hear that he was driven into the desert where he spent 40 days praying and fasting. This is a great image for us to hold on to as we ask ourselves, what should Lent be about for us? Lent is a time to do everything we can to draw closer to Jesus, making use of the time-tested disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Deacon Tim Wyman here, and this is the second of four videos I'm putting out in these final days before we begin the season of Lent. In this video, I want to give you a number of possible ways that you can move closer to the heart of Jesus through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Now don't be overwhelmed by this list, and do not set unrealistic expectations for yourself. Start small, and build over Lent as you feel drawn. Set yourself up for success. God is pleased with every effort you put forward. And every one of these suggestions I'm about to make is meant to draw you into a closer, more intimate relationship with Jesus. And that's the goal of all this, to fall deeper in love with our God. So remember, there's a number of suggestions here, but be prudent and choose just a few that you feel moved to explore. With that in mind, let's start with prayer. Here we go. Strap in and hang on. You can always stop and replay the video if needed. Number one, increase your prayer time by 10 minutes over whatever it is you do now. If you don't have a set time in your schedule, find 10 minutes and put it in your schedule. Consider it your appointment with God. Get it on your calendar. Number two, greet the Lord in the morning. Make it your first waking thought before your feet even hit the floor to start your day. Say something simple like, Thank you, Lord, for giving me the chance to live another day. I give this day to you. My God, give me the grace that I may do your will today. Help me to be the person you created me to be. Amen. It takes just a minute, but it sets the course for your day. Number three, have a running conversation with God all day long. Just talk to God as you go about your day. God desires intimacy with us. As you go through your day, share your challenges, your frustrations, your joys, your successes. Share everything, and in the process, build up your relationship to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that takes us to number four. Turn off talk radio and music while you're talking with God. And don't forget to pause and listen for God's response. Too often we pray like it's a one-way street. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone who never takes a breath? Well, God has those conversations all day long. Learn to listen for God's still, quiet voice. Make this a two-way conversation. Number five, take 10 minutes a day and get into God's Word. It feeds the soul, and it's another way that God speaks to us. There's many places to find the readings of the day along with an accompanying reflection. Here's one I like from Bishop Robert Barron. Go to LentReflections.com. Once you're there, you scroll down until you see the space for you to enter your email address. Once you've done that, click on the Sign Me Up button and you're all set. You'll get his email while you sleep, so it'll be near the top of your inbox when you check your email in the morning. It will give you a link to the day's readings and a Lenten reflection from Bishop Barron. It's great. Give it a try. Number six, remember this book you received from the parish at Christmas? If you haven't read Rediscover the Saints by now, then plan on reading it during Lent. Encounter Jesus through the lives of many who were closest to Him. Number seven, come to the Adoration Chapel once per week, even if only for 15 minutes. Just sitting in front of Jesus can be life-changing. Just ask any of the hundreds of adorers who sit with Jesus for an hour every week. Come and visit Him here just to be with Him and talk with Him. Number eight, make one extra Mass each week during Lent. It's the highest form of worship we can give our Lord. Look at your schedule and find a Mass that's close to you and works from a time standpoint. And make the commitment to make that one extra Mass each week during Lent. Number nine, speaking of Mass, make a concerted effort to enter more fully into every Mass in which you participate and expect to hear from God while you're there. I love the Matthew Kelly practice of bringing a small journal and praying this prayer before Mass. God, show me one way in this Mass that I can become the person you created me to be. And then you listen. 
You listen to the songs, the readings, the homily, the prayers of the Mass, and bam, that one thing, it will knock you over. And you write that down in your journal, and now you can pray and ask God to expand that in your prayer time during the week as you seek to become that person God created you to be. Number 10, pick a form of prayer or devotion that's not the norm for you and commit to doing that for Lent. For me, I'm going to commit to at least a decade of the rosary each day as I start Lent and work to build that up to a full rosary by the end. Now for me, the rosary has been a lifelong struggle, but I know it's a powerful form of prayer and I, I need to say it more often than I do. So I'm making that commitment for Lent and pray that the Holy Spirit will make it fruitful for myself and others. Number 11, and to that point, be intentional about praying for others. Offering prayer up for others you care about and love as you do each of these Lenten disciplines will turn it into an act of sheer love. It will give you motivation not to slack off. God will respond to those heartfelt prayers for the needs of others. So be more intentional about bring, bringing others' needs before the Lord in your conversations with Him and as you carry out your Lenten prayer commitments. Number 12. End your day with a simple form of the exam, an Ignatian form of prayer that will help you look back over your day and see how God was present and active. You can do it in five or ten minutes. First, just review your day from beginning to end and look for the times God blessed your day in large or small ways. Revel in those moments as you look back and realize that you are a beloved son or daughter of our Heavenly Father. When you've reviewed that day, then go back through the day once again. But this time, consider the times you fell short of the life God envisioned for you. Those times you made decisions you knew weren't part of God's plan for your life. Now the purpose here is not to beat yourself up over the sin in your life, but to recognize it, and then to ask for forgiveness for those offenses. If mortal sin is involved, then make plans for how you can get to confession at the next possible opportunity, so that you can receive God's forgiveness through His priest. Otherwise, you just use this opportunity to let God know of your sorrow, and then ask for the grace to do better tomorrow. And number 13, as you settle into the bed for your sleep, just tell God how thankful you are for being your God and being with you throughout the day. Ask Him to watch over you and your family as you sleep. So there you are, 13 ways to increase your prayer life and intimacy with God. Now let's talk about fasting. Now we fast not to prove we can tough out giving up something. We fast because in giving up something that gives us pleasure or happiness, we break a dependency on something temporal and realize that only in God alone can we find true and complete happiness. Now with that in mind, consider fasting from something that gives you pleasure. It doesn't mean that the thing you're giving up is necessarily evil or a moral issue, but you pick something that gives you some pleasure or a measure of happiness. Pick something to fast from that is particular to you and that will represent a real sacrifice in your life, something you've grown to overly depend on to give you comfort. For example, let's say you enjoy listening to talk or sports radio while you drive around town in your car. Now there's certainly nothing wrong with listening to talk radio or sports radio in moderation. But if you sense that perhaps you've become overly dependent somehow on that talk or sports radio, then giving that up for Lent may be fruitful. In making that sacrifice, you're saying to God that you want to find your complete happiness in Him and are willing to give up listening to sports or talk radio for Lent. Now once you've made that decision about what you want to fast from, here's some key points you need to keep in mind. First. This is not about gritting your teeth every day and just pushing your way through it with your own willpower. That's really just a waste of your time and you won't last. To gain the benefits of fasting, you ask God for grace so that you can come to depend on His strength to help you get through the sacrifice of not listening to your sports or talk radio. You lean into God to help you stay strong at those moments when you feel like you just have to turn the radio on and listen in. When you're experiencing hunger or lack of whatever it is you're fasting from, reflect on the suffering Jesus willingly did for you on the cross. Thank Him and then offer Him your own small suffering. 
This is the definition of redemptive suffering. In doing this, you're entering into the redemptive suffering Jesus willingly experienced on the cross for all mankind. Make your fast, whatever it is, a sacrifice for others. Offer up every temptation you have and ask God to bless someone else in a specific way. Let your small offering become a gift to someone else. Be proactive in your redemptive prayer as you sacrifice to lift up others. And finally, don't think about doing the fast for all of Lent or even the whole day. That's just going to overwhelm you and set you up for failure. Face each moment of temptation and focus just on that. Make that right next decision and offer it up for a specific intention and let that be your focus. Ask God to give you the grace to be strong and then move on. As we fast, we're intentionally depriving ourselves of something temporal, something we become overly dependent on so that we can turn to Jesus and let Him be the source of our comfort and joy. As we face the temptations related to our fast, we unite our own small sufferings to Jesus and offer it as a blessing for others. Finally, let's turn to almsgiving. Almsgiving is about giving out of our blessings to others. We seek to give out of abundance that we've been blessed with and seek to lift others up in some specific way. As disciples, as good stewards, we know that everything we have is pure gift from God. And during Lent, we seek to step up our game and seek to offer whatever we have so that others may be lifted up and blessed. It could be some sort of extra financial gift to a particular cause, but it's much broader than just our money. It can also be an act of service that you seek out and participate in. This is about giving of yourself for the betterment of someone else. There are many outreach activities taking place within our parish throughout Lent and beyond. Pray and consider participating in one of those ministries during Lent. Pray and keep your eye on the bulletin for specific ideas. So there you go. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Your sure fire way, pathway to deeper intimacy with God, who loved you into existence and who died that you might know the love of your Heavenly Father. Again, please do not get overwhelmed with the number of ideas I've presented in this video. This is merely a menu of ideas for you to consider. Be specific, but be realistic with what you decide to do for Lent. This is not about committing to a whole bunch of tasks, just to be doing something for Lent. It's about prayerfully selecting a few good disciplines that will build your relationship with God in a tangible way. Remember, whatever you do, the goal is to grow into a deeper, more intimate relationship with God. It's not about the method or type of prayer. All of these are tools to achieve the goal of falling ever deeper in love with our God. And know that God will be pleased with any and every effort you make to come closer to Him. I pray that your relationship with God will grow so much deeper this Lent as you seek to draw closer to Him through these disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Stay tuned for the final two videos in this series, focusing on ways your family can place God in the center of the family's Lenten journey, and the last one focusing on specific Lenten events that will make your Lent even more special this year. May you draw ever deeper into the heart of God this season of Lent. God bless you.